Arnabies. It's me, Sandy. Am I looking a little more lively? <laughs> I am so glad to be home. Ugh. It's been quite a, uh, quite a trip. So, um, yeah. That was my phone. <laughs> I've been getting messages all morning from, from all of you guys in the well wishes and the glad we're home safe and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, <laughs> just when we thought that our cluster from this week was over. Nope. <laughs> we got home and had a whole different ball of wax to deal with. Um, first thing was we accidentally left the freezer open on the bottom of our fridge. So there was water all over the floor and the stuff in our freezer had to go. So wasn't impressed with that. A few colorful words came out of my mouth. I was losing my crap. And uh, yeah, it was not happy, not happy at all. So that was the first thing. And then we were so exhausted. We, we just wanted to go to bed, but we couldn't go to bed that early. So George watched the football game. As you saw on my, my, uh, the Yarny Fairy, <laughs> him and his cussing and me having to bleep and, um, yeah, sorry about that. But, um, so we, he watched football. I tried to catch up on some of my video stuff and, uh, editing and uploading and all that kind of stuff. And then we went to bed. We went to bed a bit early, really early for us actually, really early for me. And uh, we were just like sleeping dead, like we just clunk out cold. So three o'clock in the morning, I hear something similar to this. What happened was, <laughs> I feel like Seta there. What had happened was um, that it was really cold when we got home. Like the weather changed like crazy amount. And it was like raining, overcast, cold. As you can tell, I'm wearing my sweatshirt. Um, and so we closed up all the windows and doors. Well, somebody forgot to give Bailey the memo because she went and ran full bore right into our sliding glass door. And all we heard was the bang, yelp, whimper. And I jumped out of bed. George was yelled and, uh, just scared me I, like I was out cold and it woke me up like right now and I I don't think my feet hit the floor and I was out of bed and running down the hall and all I see is Bailey sitting in the hall going like this <laughs> oh so here's a concussed Bailey standing there not looking very impressed shaking her head I'm like I can't even see straight because I'm so friggin tired and George is yelling like what the hell is going on <laughs> it was like a freaking earthquake and so I says oh my god he's he says Bailey ran into the door didn't she I was like yep and I said you have to close the curtain when you close the door because otherwise she doesn't know that you closed the door. <laughs> so, yeah. So she's okay. 
but she was not impressed at all. I, yeah, it was, it was not a good, good thing. So now she's sleeping over here. <laughs> Excuse our mess. We're doing our laundry and everything from, um, from our trip. So Bailey is laying here, not very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's that. Um, <laughs> yeah, George didn't really get much sleep last night after that, and, uh, I almost, almost let Bailey come into bed with us, <laughs> just because I felt so bad for her, <laughs> but I went, nope, 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 I can't do that. As it was, the cat came into bed with us. She actually, uh, I was really worried about her all weekend, too, because... She wasn't in the house when we left. She took off and went into the um, the shed. And I thought, well, okay. If she's in the shed, I don't have to worry about her peeing all over everything while we're gone because I still have to take her to the bathroom. She's still not all there. But anyway, so I thought, okay, I know she's safe out there. We put her food and water out there and she does that every once in a while. She'll take off into the shed and she'll be gone for a few days, right? But we know where she is. She just wants her own loan time, I guess. I don't know. So, um, so I was, I was concerned because we'd never been gone for five days and, or six days and her been out side like that but it, it's not like it was snowing or anything and it wasn't blazing hot so um i knew she was going to be fine but when we came home and we went to go look for her she wasn't in the shed and i thought oh my god where's my cat right so i was uh oops i was uh kind of freaking out a little bit and i thought no i'm not gonna go all half cocked like i usually do and lose it um, she's got to be here somewhere. She never strays from home. Uh, so I thought, okay, just let it go. She'll be coming home. And, uh, so I went shopping for some groceries that we needed. And George phones me and says, she's home. She's eating like she's never eaten before. <laughs> I was like, okay. So, um, I came home and she was all lovey-dovey and, and whatnot. And I was like, okay, you're fine. This, this is good. Um, and then she jumped into bed with us last night and cuddled. So, But when the dog hit the window, whew, she was gone. <laughs> she took off. She was like, you know, <laughs> freaked her right out too. So, but yeah, so that was our night. <laughs> so anyways, what's in my cup? Again, Starbucks. I have... You know, pumpkin spice latte. You know, next will be, you know, uh, eggnog latte. Right. We drank uh, Tim Hortons the whole time we were gone, so I thought it was time to have a Starbucks. So anyway, so that's uh, kind of it. You guys saw my yarn haul. I got another yarn haul coming. I will probably. I'll upload this video and then I will do another yarn, the yarn fairy episode uh, when that box comes. I found out that I can't go to UPS and pick it up and pay the duties there because it's still on the truck. So they try to come back. So it's like, okay, fine. So I'm just sitting waiting for that. I've got a whole bunch of cleaning to do. The house is a disaster. Uh, I got dishes to do and clean up and all that stuff so so that's what I'm going to be doing today and then once that's done and I get the video done for the um the yarn uh then I am going to sit down and try and finish that sweater that I had started I just don't even know don't know Maybe I'll just make it for a smaller person. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And uh, I guess that's it. So thank you guys so much for all of your, your comments and your, your wonderful words 
um, and putting up with the whole karaoke thing. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, let me tell you, there were some pretty bad singers there that night. And for some people to try and do like slash metal, I mean, what? Like, <laughs> oh, I was just like, oh, help me. <laughs> like, but you know, it is what it is. You got to have some serious balls to get up there and do that. And I guess the drunker you are, the more you don't care. I, I, I am not the one that should be throwing stones at glass houses because I would not get up there. I got up to do karaoke once. And that's when I was in my first marriage. I was pregnant. I was sick. And it was my husband at the time's birthday. And so... His name was Ed. Everybody called him Eddie. And so the girl, his friends, the, all these girls, he was such a womanizer, he got me up to sing Oh Mickey, except they changed it to Oh Eddie. So that song, you know, Oh Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you're blowing my mind. Hey Mickey. Well, we changed it to Oh Eddie. That's the only time. And of course they gave me the microphone. I'm like, I don't sing, what the hell? Well, you're his wife. And I'm like, I'm not the one that wants to do this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad they never got that on video. But uh, that was the only time that I ever did karaoke. <laughs> and I will never do it again. So kudos to all of you that can do it. Because like I'll sing in the shower, I'll sing around the house. Um, George keeps saying, you should do the karaoke. Um, mm -mm. Sorry, I have many talents and that is not one of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, no. Uh, but anyway, um, so thank you for, for all of your, your kind words. <laughs> um, I'm glad that him and his mom have that connection. Uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that my mom and I couldn't have the crochet connection that we that I have now um, before she passed away I that's one of my biggest regrets and so for him to be able to have that with his mom warms my heart oh and I just grin and bear it and sit through it because I know that those are memories for him that you know, I don't have uh, with my mom or my dad I have other memories but not something as special as that so, um, so yeah, I, I want to give that to him. Oh, that's what it was. Ding, ding, ding. Holy. Talk to my publisher today and the books are on their way for Lydia. I also found out that the publishing company iUniverse is the one that I went through. Some of you are asking about publishing. So talk to iUniverse. They're a fantastic company. Uh, it's self-publishing. They'll give you all the information that you need. Um, I, I highly recommend them. Um, so iUniverse actually bought out the company that I was with called Trafford Publishing in Victoria, BC for my children's books. But at the time that I did Lydia, they didn't, um, they didn't publish children's books. Now they do. Woo! I am so happy because I have five children's books in the works. They're ready to go, but I haven't got an illustrator. <sighs> Anybody? Hey, do any of you do illustrations? <laughs> like children's illustrations? Um, I, I'll insert a picture here of the cover of my book, Bully Robin Redbreast. Now, what I'm planning on doing is republishing this book through iUniverse. So then I can get both the books brought in. So um, <clears throat> right now you can still get Bully Robin Redbreast on Amazon. Uh, so if, you're, if you really want one right now, then you can get it through them. Uh, it's all about bullying. It's, it's, actually, it's actually kind of a cool story. When I was flagging, when I was in construction years ago, 
I was in Stanley Park, BC, and I was doing a job, and there was robins everywhere, right? And uh, this one robin was pulling on this worm and fighting and fighting with this worm, and it was just, it was a struggle. It, I was watching this for like an hour, and I thought, holy cow, man, that is a tough worm. And um, <laughs> so it just gave me this idea for the book. And here I am on the job site. I'm not doing a whole lot. We're on what's called barricade watch. Basically, it's we've got barricades up and we're just telling people, sorry, you got to turn around and go the other way. We're not doing anything. So out comes my notepad and I start writing. And I wrote Bully Robin Redbreast on the job site. Now, all of my children's books are actually poems that I wrote, right? Because I... I used to write poems all the time. Um, I have the Ambassador of Poetry from the U.S. Uh, medal and everything. So anyway, all of my children's books are poems that I wrote. So, <laughs> Bailey, no. So um, anyways, my sister said to me, you got to make that into a book, in a, in a children's book. My sister's the children's writer, right? She's got two books out. So she says, you got to make this a book. I'm like, eh, I don't know anything about writing books. So, but I did. And San, um, Sarah Penhale was my illustrator at the time. She lived on Salt Spring Island and she was 19 years old. And she sent me the first draft for Bully Robin Redbreast and I loved it. I didn't get her to change a thing. It was the first draft and it was done. And I was just so happy. So when it came to doing the next books, Sarah went on to bigger and better things. She went to art school and she ended up writing her own children's books. So I lost my illustrator. <laughs> I'm going, great, I got five children's books and no illustrator. So I'm in the process of trying to figure that all out. So all of my children's books have a story behind them, as in Bully Robin Redbreast is about bullying. I've got another book called A Horse, of course, and that's all about self-esteem. Um, you know, I've got um, Molly Finds Her Way Home. That's all about a, uh, a dog who's an older dog who <clears throat> tells a story of her travels to her grandchildren. Um, you know, so all of the, all of the children's books have, uh, something about them that's, you know, about, you know, self-esteem and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, God, why do I always talk about stuff that's non-yarny on here on my vlogs? I don't get it. Right, anyway. Um, so anyways, yes, I'm going to get it republished and then I'm going to try and find another illustrator for my other books as well. As for Lydia, everybody's saying, when are you going to do a sequel? I started a sequel. I got five chapters in and scrapped the whole thing. Uh, so, I don't know. You have to be in the right frame of mind to do writing. And I just haven't been there, right? It's been a long time since I've actually written anything. So, uh, yeah, that's may never come. I've got like four novels that I'm st I've started and I have not I haven't finished any of them. So, and they're all horror type novels. So, anyway. Uh so that's pretty much it. So, I will let you guys know when the books get here. And I know I've got a few of you that want the book. I've got your information. Uh so when they get here, I will contact you and uh, we'll get that out to you. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so yarny things, non-yarny things, you know. <laughs> it's all about me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, guys, so thanks for joining me, uh, and I will talk to you later. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you all. Bye. Bye.